Welcome to Pointless Rewind, where I am sarcastically guiding you through my various attempts at Hitman missions. I'm talking about everything from my very first inept attempt till I finally get Silent Assassin. Today I'm talking about one of the featured contracts in the Frivolous Fables set. The contract is R.I.P. Hans Christian Andersen. I have no idea what that's in reference to, nor who that is. However, I would like to get to know who you are, whether that's through your likes, your comments, or your subscriptions. After that bit of housekeeping, it's time for 47 to do a bit of housekeeping himself as he inserts into the consulate as a member of the janitorial staff. Now, he chose this insertion point because the contract requires three kills, all of them unarmed and in the same disguise, but the disguise itself doesn't matter. And this was the closest spot. I mean, one of his targets is just sitting here in this room right here. But 47 needs to do a little bit of scouting first before taking him out. And he does so in the most obvious of manners. Now, most people would see this guy just skulking around like that and immediately think, oh shit, this guy's gonna kill me. But 47's way ahead of everyone. He's dressed as a janitor and this room is filled with clutter. There's papers everywhere and there's shredded documents all over the place. And it honestly just looks like 47's new on the job and overwhelmed with the scope of the task ahead of him. With that in mind, 47 checks out his surroundings. He spots his target, but also a ton of other people. It's a crowded room. Knowing that cleaning this room of targets and garbage is going to be pretty tough, 47 heads back into that R&R room where his first target's located, tosses this coin over here, and breaks his target's neck. He starts to move the body, but then abruptly stops, and one can only surmise that it's probably because he realized he hasn't really gotten started on cleaning that other room, and 47 wants to handle the big projects first. So he takes a walk to try to figure out how to clean that other room. Eventually, he finds his way back into that room and stands creepily behind that pillar again. He still doesn't know what to do about that mess or his target, who has merged with the blinds at this point for some reason. Luckily, there is that enforcer janitor across the room who 47 could ask for advice on how to handle such a difficult job. But he doesn't want to be seen actually asking for help, so he heads back into that room where he killed the guard and he draws the attention of that enforcer janitor. Unfortunately, the enforcer janitor spots the mess that 47 left. Before he can start criticizing 47's work, 47 punches him out. At this point, he's already lost one of the objectives, the no pacification objective, but the mess in that other room is starting to really, really get to him. I mean, there's just so much stuff to clean up, and with that enforcer janitor unconscious, it's all on 47's shoulders. Then this jerk shows up. He walks right over to that shredded paper, bends down and stares at it. This is like a knife to 47's gut. Here he is, super anxious about not being able to do his job. And this guy is clearly giving off passive aggressive vibes to 47. Being judged by that punk finally snaps 47 out of it. He just decides, you know what, screw it. I'm just going to do the best that I can do. You know, nobody's perfect and I can only be as good as I believe I am. With that utter nonsense in mind, 47 takes out this NPC and then walks up to his target and puts him in a chokehold. At this point, the seated non-target hears something and stands up Years of muscle memory kick in for 47 as he shoots that guy in the face. And it's while 47 is breaking his target's neck that he has a personal breakthrough. He realizes, I didn't have to clean that room. I am not a janitor, I am a hitman. Having reacquainted himself with his choice in careers, 47 strides purposefully downstairs to the bottom floor. One last guard tries to stop 47 and make him clean the floors. Hey, hey. I need your help. All right, what's hey, going somebody want to help? We've got a But 47 done caring about what other people think. He just marches out of the consulate through this riot and into the bazaar. Eventually, he arrives at this storefront where his third target is. 47 immediately walks in and into the back area, but turns on his heels when he almost runs into this guy. 
The proprietor of the store is curious, but mostly just because she's surprised by how fast 47 cleaned her store. 47 takes a quick walk around the block to clear his mind, and then he returns to the store. The storekeep tries to engage him in conversation. How long have you been in town? Carpets! Carpets! Wow, that lady switched from small talk to saleswoman about as fast as one could. Unfortunately, that lady's never going to learn. She's going to think that her small talk actually worked because when 47 goes to take out this guy, he does tidy up after himself. But 47 was just trying to make an easier path for himself to his third target who's up here on the roof along with this lady. He distracts the guard with a coin, follows him up these little stairs, and takes him out after getting in a little brouhaha with him over who's going to clean up that coin. The lady witnesses all of this Someone help me. and escapes. Being seen by one witness is bad enough, but then 47 is seen by everyone dancing around on this roof, trying to figure out how the hell to get off of this roof. Eventually, he finds his way off and out of the map, but hopefully run number two is a bit cleaner. But you gotta wonder whether 47 is actually serious about being cleaner. I mean, he brings emetic poison this run, which is designed to induce vomiting and or diarrhea. But regardless, 47 starts by working on this guard. He draws him with the sounds of a bullet. The guard knows that something's awry, but he decides to moonwalk to the spot, and so he's ambushed by 47 who breaks his neck. He then walks back into that main room where his other target is and takes up his customary position standing awkwardly behind this pillar while trying to ignore that mess. Then that one asshole comes in and stares intently at that mess again. 47 does not want this on his mind again. He went through hell last time and he's not going to go through it again. So he tries to just forget about all that by including himself in this conversation, even if it's a little bit awkward. Eventually, he walks back away. They finally finish. His target goes and does that thing where he merges with the blinds. 47 doesn't have too much patience right at this moment, so he goes and injects him now, hoping that no one sees. But of course, that one asshole is like the office gossip, and he eagerly runs off to tell everyone about the mess that guard is about to make. So 47 shoots him in the head. His target has momentarily stopped crapping his pants, so 47 shoots him as well. Now there's no silent assassin and he's also failed his objectives again, so 47 is going to treat the rest of this run as a learning experience. He learns to count as first one guard attacks him, and then a second, third, and fourth attack him in this room. There's then a fifth and sixth guard out in this hallway, but when he tries to divide that by one janitor, that ends up with one dead hitman. So it took about four minutes for this entire run to fall apart, but since it was a learning experience, 47 expects to do much better. And he does in run number three. It only takes him 18 seconds for that run to fall apart. Yep, he forgot to put that remote emetic device away. And now 47 is running for his life, which probably isn't necessary because everywhere he turns, guards and witnesses are almost intentionally not looking at him. Maybe this is supposed to be symbolic about how cleaning staffs and wage workers can be invisible to those more financially blessed. Whatever the reason though, 47 is able to take out this guard and steal his disguise. A witness does spot this and is outraged at 47 trying to climb up above his station. So that elitist prick gets a bullet to the face. With that witness out of the way, 47 thinks he can just smoothly walk out of this situation. And it does work at first with this guard, but then he walks smack dab into this enforcer guard. However, that guard is not able to keep up with 47 as he takes a very complex and frankly maze-like route to get the drop on this guard. This is very complicated stuff. And then 47 adds insult to injury by popping him one in the head and then heads into that relaxation room where his first target is and it truly is relaxing it's like a whole nother world in here because where it was all chaos and gunfire and chases and enforcers before there's just a sense of overwhelming peace in this room and that extends to this larger room where his second target is it's clear that 47 has entered the part of the swedish consulate where people come to decompress. They just leave all of their stress outside of these walls. 
Now that he knows that this is an easygoing lot, he has no issue just barging into this conversation and gently nudging his target out of it. I think the target actually realized that he was having kind of a stressful conversation, so he was actually glad for the interruption, which is why he doesn't do anything. 47 pulls out his syringe and just holds onto it for a few seconds. No one seems to pay it any heed. Again, this room is really about relaxing, so I'm sure there's a lot of hard drugs being injected into veins left and right. However, 47 is a bit too tense to find a vein. He just goes for the lower back. As 47 follows his sick target out of the room, he notices that the rest of the building has also relaxed quite a bit. Everyone is just in a state of zen, which is why when this guard sees this guy about to throw up, he's really kind of annoyed. I mean, he just moved his dead body's colleague, but the sounds of vomiting and diarrhea are going to just throw off his inner balance. 47 makes peace with himself and takes out his target once they're alone in this room. And then he heads back into that massage room, which is probably like the seventh different name I've had for this room. 47 shoots his bullet to distract the guard. This time the guard is looking in the right direction, but he fails to notice this obvious person of interest, and he's killed at breakneck speed. And now it's time for 47 to make his way to his third target. Since he's now at peace with himself, he has no issues being detected by witnesses left and right. He's failed basically every objective so far, so he's just gonna take this all in stride. He's gonna be really chill about it. Like, there's no need to hide this body, and there's no need to avoid being seen by this lady. 47's just gonna let things happen the way they were meant to happen. After killing his target and the witness, he does briefly forget this newfound philosophy and climbs into this bin. And then he realizes, no, I'm gonna relax. I don't care if people see me. I am who I am. I am not what people think of me. If they see me for who I am, so be it. And with that confounding belief in mind, he gets out of the bin while that guard is looking at him. That guard screams at 47. I'm gonna fucking kill you! But he just can't pull the trigger because of how peaceful he is, which is on full display with this very gentle broken neck. It's pretty clear that 47 is using inner peace and nirvana as a mask for how much of a psychopath he's been this run. But no amount of self-delusion would make 47 actually think that run was a clean run. So it's on to run number four. And in this run, 47 is immediately focused on just maintaining that inner balance. He starts again as the janitor and picks up his emetic syringe. And then he walks into that massage room. That guard still can't quite figure out 47. To him, 47's like a Dark Souls boss. He's just got to keep trying over and over and improve little by little. He dies, which is nothing to be ashamed of in Dark Souls. Moving into the next room, he sees his target having this really dull, stressful conversation and he tells him, Hey man, relax. Take a chill pill. That target does so next to this window and 47 just stands very rigidly behind him. Which might have come off as creepy, but I think everyone in this room just looks at him and says, Wow, that guy really is centered. Eventually, 47 bumps into that guy who he thought had been criticizing his janitorial work but this time 47 realizes that this guy was just coming in here to do some lunges as 47's target moves over to that whiteboard he's almost seen by this enforcer but he avoids detection by doing some half-assed lunges of his own after stretching his calves and hamstrings he goes and injects that guard and may that guard rest in peace with all his consulate targets killed 47 coolly and confidently leaves the building. And he's still calm and collected when he arrives at that storefront. However, that anxious sales lady who can't small talk worth a damn, her negative energy rubs off on 47. He loses a little bit of his cool and instead of just putting this guy in a chokehold, he punches him in the lower back. You could tell he definitely lost control a little bit there, which he immediately does again because he had this grand plan involving emetic grenades, but he opts to just push his target off this building. So he finishes the run with Silent Assassin, but alas, pushing him off that building does not constitute a melee kill. And that's what happens when 47 loses even a little bit of control. He fails an objective. 
So we're on to a run number five, and thankfully 47 is so at peace that everything is just going super smoothly. He kills the directionally challenged massage guard, he gets his second target to chill during his conversation and to go right to the whiteboard rather than to go merge with those blinds, saving him some valuable minutes, and his form on that injection is just pitch perfect. Things are going so smooth that Enforcer Klaus Strandberg fails to notice 47 because he's hypnotized by these graceful moves. But some people are less impressed. Some people are just going to be critical. Sir, please conduct yourself in an orderly fashion. Dude, you're just jealous that 47 is confident enough to do these awkward lunges directly in front of you. But 47 doesn't let that get him down. He just goes and kills his target and doesn't think a uh, second thought about it. It's now off to that carpet shop, which is where you go to find 47's most repetitive mistakes. He had brought an extra emetic syringe so that he could inject this guy up here and then he was gonna use the remote emetic device on the lady. But when he goes to inject this guy, he punches him in the lower back again. There are definitely unresolved feelings between these two, which wouldn't be such a big deal, except for the no pacifications objective. God damn it, I'm about to lose my inner peace. 47 starts this final run in the same manner as before. This guard finally shows a modicum of improvement because he takes a brief glance towards 47 before being killed, but that's a massive improvement. That second guard also shows a massive improvement because rather than waiting till he gets to the whiteboard, he just shits his pants in the middle of the room. 47 thanks him for graciously saving him some time by killing him on this nice and comfortable carpet rather than in that cold and cramped maintenance room. And all of this improvement is infectious because even 47 finds himself improving things. He figures, why deal with that dude who I just have to punch in the lower back and just go up this other staircase where no one is standing here. This is such a peaceful experience that this lady really doesn't care when 47 misthrows his emetic grenade. She's just briefly puzzled by this poisonous looking green gas, but then she shrugs her shoulders and moves on. 47 rushes across the roof, silently thanking that lady, and then silently assassinates that final target. With that body hidden, 47 leaves the store and escapes the map and achieves true nirvana. So that's how I did R.I.P. Hans Christian Andersen. I had a lot of fun doing this video, actually probably more fun than the actual contract. I'm sure others have fancy ways of doing this, but it felt like there's really only one solution for that one consulate target in the crowded room. But as usual, I just love how goofy the AI and the actions all end up being. And I actually played this one with my brother over Thanksgiving and made him a fan of watching me play Hitman. He has no intention of ever playing the game, but he apparently really loved watching me play it, so that was cool. Hopefully you guys enjoy it too, so I can get those likes and subscriptions, and you can stay tuned for more of these videos.